Hi, everybody. This is David Tannenbaum here. I'm on the Artistic Advisory Board of the Great Omni Guitar Series in San Francisco, and we're going to be welcoming Scott Tennant to play a live from St. Mark's concert that will be released December 5th at 730. And I'm here to talk with Scott about his program. Welcome, Scott. Thanks, David. Great to be here virtually. Yes. Nice to see you virtually. Almost not, here. not physically far away, but virtually, nevertheless. So um, we, you know, you don't really need an introduction in our guitar world, so we can skip that part and just get to talking to each other. Um, so I just wanted to ask you first how your musical life has been in the pandemic, what you're thinking about these days. I mean, we're a good solid eight months into this thing, and it's altered all of our lives. I think this is the longest time I've not been on an airplane, and I can't remember how long, and I'm sure that's true for you as well. So I'm just curious as to your thoughts about that. Uh, you know, as uh, we were talking a little bit before we uh, started recording about uh, how at the beginning, first of all, at the beginning, it was in March. And so we locked down immediately at our school at USC. And um, we all just had to, you know, trial by fire, we all just had to start teaching ourselves how to do this. And, and it went on all summer. I mean, there was literally not a day break. Uh, even on some Sundays all summer, we were just trying to figure this out with endless meetings and interviewing people with software ideas and stuff. So, um, but once we got it kind of figured out, uh, until then that took all my time personally, but once we kind of got it figured out, I thought, okay, wow, now I can, you know, this isn't going to be so bad, right? I can sign off and I can go practice. I can, I'm right here. I can, I can, I can make dinner and then I can come back for another lesson or I can go to a meeting and then come back to a lesson no parking, no traffic. And, um, but the, the dreams of all the dreams of um, convenient practice kind of took a back seat still to everything else because there's still it seems like so much prep to do. And as you know, David, I'll tell you, it's um, uh, for me, a lesson online, especially a day of lessons, it tires me out much more than live. It's just the focus it takes to, to do this, I actually, I got these special, uh, I was getting these really bad headaches for the couple months. And I, I have these readers and these are uh, blue blockers. So actually that I got these because of this and they actually help a lot. That's interesting. Yeah. I, it's, it is exhausting. I've been thinking about the fact that we're, we're moving our bodies left less, you know, I mean, even at the conservatory, I walk up the stairs and between lessons, I go take maybe a long walk or I get up to, you know, maybe move a student's arm or something like that. And so I think it's a combination of the kind of localization of our focus, but also the fact that we're just not as physically active. That is, is hard. We're staring into a whole lot of screens, you know? Very true. Very true. Yeah. And I noticed that with my students too, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> more than any other time that I can remember, uh, we have students now who are coming up with little aches and pains and, Oh, this hurts. And Oh, I, you know, I, I tweak something. And, and uh, I realize you know, it's like, they're not moving either. They're, they're, they're usually biking and skateboarding and walking to campus and they're constantly moving and doing something. And they're all pretty active on top of that. They all play sports or exercise and they're not doing anything right, right now. And so uh, you know, it's, it's causing this little wave of uh, unfortunate, you know, uh, aches and pains. Yeah, Dude. it's life as we have never known it before. You know, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Are you inspired to practice these days? I mean, you said it's logistically hard. Are you coming up with new musical projects? I mean, I find myself, you know, doing this virtual stream or, you know, I did something for the Met last week, which is wonderful to do, but there are different kinds of projects coming up. Mm -hmm. um are you how are you doing with that um when they come up i find i mean i i haven't i've thought of a few things myself but then my 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 equipment at home is honestly limited i mean i do have it's not hooked up now but i have this external mic which actually sometimes doesn't work so it when it does it sounds great and then i have a little camera i plop on top of my uh <clears throat> my laptop here for a little bit better image but 
really it's kind of limited. So when I come up with these ideas and then I, I think, well, I can't really do that because then I don't have the editing software that you know I need. And, <clears throat> and the older I get, the less patient I am with myself about learning something like when I was a kid, when I was younger, I would have just completely jumped all over the technology involved. And, you know, but, you know, I, it takes, it takes me longer to learn things now. And as, as far as, uh, you know, anything like editing software of, you know, audio video. So that right there squashes a lot of things I'd like to do. Yeah. It's um, interesting that some friends are diving hard into that and just like Bill, we've been talking to him. Mm -hmm. and he's learning all kinds of new stuff, pro tools or whatever. And others have not. I, I've just stayed in the, you know, just kind of the, the usual practicing with hard paper um, realm and mm -hmm. doing projects like that. You know? Yeah. Well, but, actually, though, but, but, you know, it, you know, aside from the things that I've, <clears throat> I've thought of um, trying to do with the, uh, a few other people uh I've, I've been involved in in other people's uh projects i mostly um mostly with the quartet uh we've done a few things we finished um um uh, this project that you know sergio assad right. has put up with his right. daughter clarice have put out these <clears throat> amazing videos they do with artists you know and she either she edits or she has friends do these artistic renderings of, uh, you know, whatever musical, musical, uh, well, it's usually, it's usually a piece by her or her father. And um, so we finished one and that, that took a lot, quite a lot of time because, you know, we had to order like a, I had to order like a black uh, backdrop, you know, I used it once. Now it's in my car covering up, junk in my car but <laughs> it was a one use thing right and um and setting up my you know my place is set up ideally for just me playing guitar or teaching but as far as getting you know the, i don't have any blank walls to hang these things on so you know i had to nail it up and you know it was all these non-musical things just to play music yeah and that's basically it yeah that's the thing that's getting to me about this but it was fun yeah it was fun. And then Bill, we've finished, um, we had to do, um, uh, <laughs> the, we, as you know, Pat Matheny wrote us this piece a few, a couple years ago. <clears throat> Actually, it's like three years now and three or four, we've played at every concert since we got it. Um, and we recorded it for him and, and it was took forever for him to get around to having his team edit it and all that stuff. But it. um, um it's finally ready and i think it'll be out in january and um uh you know it's the piece he wrote for jason and then the piece he wrote for us and then he plays uh, an ervo parrot uh, oh. uh on malvina i think it's the one. Oh yeah so it's uh, an almathini disc and it's a yeah. disc in cd form that kind of thing it will be in cd form uh that's the thing that took him the longest was he was really really down and uninspired by the way the the the, the turns that the music industry was taking uh pre-covid even uh where you know people are downloading things you know pirated online and then you know the so he just was wondering where that was going to go but anyway so we're that that was all done so what so then after waiting two years for this uh, recording to finally be edited Suddenly he's going, hey, we need um, we need that publicity, those publicity, uh, that interview we did, and we need these shots you took. And and right now, and, and this is a side note, the, the photographer who did all that, um, her and her boyfriend are uh, bought a house in Granada. So they're still in the States, but all of their stuff, including that hard drive, is on a shipping container somewhere on the coast of Spain. Wow. And so all of that stuff is there. And they're like, well, man, guys, we need this. So we had to go in and record, um, uh, sync, do some syncing to the, the, what will be the CD. Yeah. And you know, it actually, uh, we actually, we rented a, a local hall, a small hall. We were very, 
mindful of space and all that. And, and it was just us and we set up cameras. We didn't have anybody to film us. So we set up these cameras and Bill's editing it just to have material they can use. And uh, that's actually it's the first time we met since uh, late February. Wow. And that's gotta be decades since that's ever happened for you forever. Oh yeah. 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 Well, lots to say about that. I mean, first of all, maybe Matheny doesn't have to worry so much because the whole industry has fallen apart so he can relax on that one. But, um, you know, a, a lot of you out there with the Sergio videos, you can find them online and they're quite wonderful. There's one done in the style of an old uh, movie, like mm -hmm. an old silent movie. They're just wonderful to see. And what Scott is describing in terms of syncing videos, people do that sometimes with YouTubes. Um, so some of the YouTubes you're seeing that you think are perfectly played, in fact, they are synced to perfectly edited audios, but you should enjoy them nevertheless. But that is just the reality of what's happening. Well, we were doing it. I thought, can't we just play concerts like this? I mean, you know, uh, you know, well, Millie have, Vanilli did it, you know, Millie Vanilli, yeah, just I mean, and, and a lot of people in the pop field, I guess the, the, the they kind of expect that that some something will be synced to at some point. Yeah. Well, if you're playing the Super Bowl with a crowd that size, you know, yeah. you, you usually leave it to chance, I think, or, or right. to the moment. Yeah. But anyway, there are the indefatigable people amongst us like Sergio. And another one of those is Richard Patterson, who is going to be producing concerts come hell or high water. That's just what Richard does. So he's found a way to do this live from St. Mark's uh, series, and you're going to be part of it. And I'm excited about that. I wanted to talk to you about the program a little bit. Um, you know, you, you tend to really cherish and play the music of particularly the 17th century Baroque composers. Sometimes, you know, the, the sort of a, the, the, the century of sort of experimentation where styles change so much. And these wonderful composers um, that we play on the guitar, but certainly not at the level we play Weiss and Bach and Scarlatti, the late Baroque composers. So you've got this set in here. Uh, the, barric the mysterious barricades of Couperin. You've got a Rameau, who I, I just particularly love. Devise, Couperin, Lully. I just wonder if you want to tell us about that set and how it came together. <clears throat> yeah, um, there, except for the, the barricades and the fanfaronette, they're all uh, arranged by Alex Dunn, who we both know very well. And the guy is just amazing that he does such great uh, arrangements. This was back, this is from his um, doctoral thesis at uh, UC San Diego a long time ago. Another guy who was indefatigable. He's just always yes, doing a million Always projects. doing something. Yeah. And um, uh, wh wh his thesis was the, the Theorbo music of Did Robert de Vizier. Yeah. And this at a time when I think one of his inspirations and, and reference uh, a mentors was Bob Strizich at the time, who was doing a lot of Baroque guitar uh, things on for about you know on Debussy and other composers, but a lot of Debussy. And um, so he just did all these arrangements, and actually he was making them. I don't know about now, but he was making them all just available on his website. Uh, now, if he's sorry, Alex, if you're watching this, and that's not the case now, but um, they're just so great, and I just I just started reading through them. The French Baroque has always been my favorite style of Baroque anyway. Um, of course, you know, who doesn't like Bach, right? And, you know, um, I actually got to the point, though, where I would program Bach. And it, you know, I, I enjoy working on it more than I like performing it. Just because <clears throat> after you get it worked up just, just right, there's all this extra underlying stress involved because everybody's got an opinion about it and they're going to, they're going to tell you. And so there's no, there's nothing, you, you can't do anything right. And I just got tired of like having people like, you know, you know, out opinion me on ornaments and style. and all. So um, <clears throat> I started, I didn't play Baroque music for a long time in my concerts just because of that. And then I caught, got a hold of these and they just feel so good. They're not easy. I mean, with the stretches, well, uh, Two of them are tuned down the Musette and the uh, Sylvain are tuned down to C and G. So there are a lot of stretches that you have to do. But other than that, they just feel, uh, they just feel comfortable. They feel right. They're these luxurious, you know, 
Devizé took uh, popular pieces of the time and arranged them for Theorbo and Baroque guitar. And these come th from the Theorbo and then Alex put those on the guitar and they sound great and I love them. And there are a lot more than this. I just chose a few. Yeah. There's actually a lot of music for Theorbo by, by Vizé. You know, yeah. I, I tend to advise students to stay away from Bach in major competitions for that very reason. I mean, we have really one of the top greatest of composers that we play and we all have an attitude about it and, and way more attitude about Bach than say his colleague Weiss, who was from the same time in the same country, you right. know, judges will let you get away with all kinds of variety and vice, but Bach has to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. I always think about what Gustav Leonhardt said. He said, back then, they knew a lot less about authenticity than we do now, you know, they were just, <laughs> they were just musicians, you know, but, um, you know, of course we study the style, but, but boy, do we have, we get uptight about Bach. We do. Paul Odette, we have Paul Odette come and teach for us every year. And it's so the, you know, the faculty, we're just, uh, we're taking as many notes as the students, you know, but one thing he said to a student once he was saying, you know, I heard you warming up with this piece and, and it was really sounding a lot of life in it and everything. And now you're playing it like a metronome. What's going on? <clears throat> and um, he said, well, I, you know, have to respect the, you know, there's no, uh, you have must be, you must stick to the, uh, you know, to a tempo when you're playing Bach. And that's what he'd heard. And Paul Udette's comment was, but Bach was alive when he wrote it. <laughs> and, and he was a passionate guy and he probably didn't have a metronome and, you know, so, you know, my opinions have loosened up a lot about it, but you're right. Everybody has something to say and it can unfortunately, uh, you know, count against uh, somebody with great intentions who's playing it in a competition or an audition. Yeah, yeah audition and, as well. Yeah. yeah, and there's so many other great, you know, Vice. Wow, why don't people play more Vice? Yeah. Oh, I love Vice particularly. But was Bach a passionate guy? Let's let's think about it for a second. He had 20 children and he got into a knife fight with a bassoonist who pissed him off. Oh, I like so, that. Yeah. Really? That actually know. happened. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, he was passionate. Absolutely. Really? At a time also when people didn't drink a lot of water for safety's sake, but they, they pretty much uh, started and ended their day with, you know, beer. Yeah. And also, you know, if you read the Bach Reader, which is basically contains all the original documents of Bach. Most of it is him pissed off at the authorities, but trying to sort of couch it in diplomatic language. But he mm -hmm. was, you know, angry at these people a lot of the time. So mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, yeah, I think Paul has a good point there. Um, do you want to tell us some things about the rest of the program? Yeah, well, he, uh, <clears throat> Richard um, uh, wanted something that's uh, within the 45 minute range and, uh, that includes a little, you know, I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the pieces. Not, I won't, I won't over, over talk about all, everything, but um, so the program looks short because it's, it has to kind of be within that 45 minute range. Um, <clears throat> nowadays, I'm kind of playing just the things I like and especially um, one thing about, we're talking about the pandemic, you know, being isolated and locked down all that. Um, I, I feel like I, it's comforting to play pieces. I, I just really want to play and they make me feel good. <clears throat> and I kind um, of feel like we should always do that. So that's Life is kind of short, you know, and the world is kind yeah. of full. Mm -hmm. So I think we should always probably do that. Right. And um, so that's what this, that's where this program comes from. Um, I feel very comfortable starting with that tremolo piece. It just kind of, it just to kind of let my fingers start flying and get the, the heebie-jeebies out, you know, big movements. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, the two pieces by uh, Alfonso Montes, just gorgeous. Uh, you know, the first piece. Um, well, John Williams has recorded on his what's it called, Diablo Suelto. Right, the Venezuelan album. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then the second piece he wrote for me. It's this really odd cross-string tremolo. Uh, I wouldn't call it an etude. It could be an etude, but it's just, it's called floreando and it basically means blooming. Uh, it's just these harmonies that just kind of morph over time. And it's, it's just beautiful. So I programmed it, all the Baroque pieces in the set. 
uh, I find very refreshing, honestly. And then I thought this time, you know, everybody, you know, this is without an audience in this church, right? You know, just going to be for a, and, you know, we all tried, you know, at least back in my youth, I, I certainly tried to end with a bang and, you know, you're flexing those technique muscles and end with the bang and, you know, get the encore and get people standing up. But now I'm like, oh man, you know, my chi is, my chi is shifting as I get older. And um, if it were up to me, I'd be very happy spending the rest of my life being some, guitar celtic guitar player just you know playing playing celtic folk music the rest of my life and i love it and um so i just i'm just ending with a couple of little simple celtic tunes not a bang but a whimper yeah but that's why not i mean i the the streams that i've done you know one's involvement with the music is the same but there's something sterile about it, especially when you end, you know, you try to raise this energy and then you come to a final note yeah. and there's a microphone or there's a, you know, a cell phone or something like that recording you. Right. So in a way it seems almost natural to do it more quietly than we might with an audience though. Yeah, that's true. It, it is kind of odd just to kind of go and, and then look at <laughs> yeah. me and then there's no sound. It's like, yeah. hey. <laughs> okay. That's all folks. <laughs> Scott, thanks so much for spending time with us and thanks, with me, David. and I, I really look forward to this program. Me too. Thank you. Okay.